Welcome back everybody, Eric Coleman, General Contractor. Happy Saturday morning to you, first off. Uh, this is our second project of the day, but this is part one of our uh, bathroom vanity that we're gonna show you how we're building. We're also showing you how to build the uh, recessed shelf in the wall. So this is uh, part one. This piece here is, uh, we're getting out of walnut for this one. We're, we're jumping into ambrosia maple. So this is what the customer wanted. This is a really cool piece. Uh, we're gonna show you how to take this rough cut slab right here and we're gonna make that really cool vanity that we've been telling you about. So step by step everything we're gonna show you. Uh, first thing you wanna do before we get into building the box to house this guy, uh, we've already sent a laser right down the center of this uh, you can use a number of things to get a straight line all the way down, guide rails, anything like that. Uh, we wanted uh, pretty much an even amount of space on both sides. Once we make that cut down the center, then we're going to flip these guys and turn them around to where the curve of the wood is actually on the inside. Then this straight line is going to give us our outer edges. So we're going to go ahead and cut through this guy and get him split and then literally we're gonna put this to the side and start building this box. Uh, it's a lot easier to get your box built. Then we're gonna place the wood accordingly and make measurements and marks based on our box to drop it in. Uh, good way, heavy slab like this. We took a couple of one by fours, two on the left side, two on the right to get it up off our table. So when we make this cut, uh, obviously we're not digging into anything. We don't have to hold this up in the air. So we're going to split these guys, be right back, and we're going to start building this box. Okay, so we've got our maple out of the way. We already split it in two. Um, so this is the, uh, this is a three-quarter inch sheet of birch. This is what we're going to be using for our box to house our base. You can use melamine. You can use, you know, any other type. Uh, we just prefer the birch. I know it's a little more expensive, but we like the sturdiness of it. Uh, the tape cleans to it real good and so on. So um, what we're going to do, we've already got our dimensions for, for what we need for this counter. You can see it right there in the line. Uh, what I want to point out before we cut this, here are my exact dimensions, 20 and 3 quarter for my depth and then 68 and an eighth all the way for the length of it. What I want to tell you, because we're building walls on here, uh, we want to accommodate for that three quarters of an inch for the walls all the way around. So safely, uh, a good tip, I always add an inch to both sides. So the 68 and an eighth, if we add an inch on this side and an inch on the other side, we're going to get 70 and an eighth. All right, and then the same with the 20 and the three quarter on the depth, we're actually gonna get 22 and three quarter. So whatever your dimensions are, whatever your size is, if your walls are being built with a one by four like ours, that is truly only a three quarters of an inch, but we go ahead and add the inch instead of the three quarter. Um, so when we put our walls up, we're going to be screwing these walls from underneath to hold them. That's going to give us that inch lip to set the three quarter inch on and actually, you know, get that wall to stand up there like we're wanting it to. So that's the whole reason behind that. Make sure to add whatever your dimensions are. Make sure to allow and don't forget inch on one side and not the other. So you got to times that by two. So we're going to go ahead and get this cut out. And we're going to start forming up these walls and getting this ready to go. Okay, so we have got this guy cut to fit, got all the waste away, and all we've done is taken our first one by four here we're using for the wall. We cut him exactly to fit because we already knew the distance. So measured, cut him to fit on both sides. And uh, we used uh, several clamps here to clamp this guy down straight. And now we're gonna put our screws right up underneath of here and lock this guy right in place. So we're going to go ahead and pop this guy down. We're going to pop these other three sides and we're going to bring you right back. Uh, you would do the same for your piece. Just keep in mind, uh, you can have overhang 
it won't matter if we go to put the next piece in right here and it hangs past, it's no big deal. It's all about that last piece. He's got to fit like a glove. So that's pretty much it to building your box once you have your dimensions. Um, I do, once these meet up here in the corner, I do secure them corner to corner. And I always put a square in here to make sure that my wall is standing straight and not crooked. So keep that in mind as you're putting this together. We're going to go ahead and zip these four walls in and bring you right back. And we're going to show you how we're going to set this ambrosia maple in here and get him square and fit. Okay, so I just want to show you real quick. We got our three sides up. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but this wall is a little cocked in this way. So we've already got our end down there secure. What I want to show you that will help square up your project when putting these sides on. Most people wouldn't think about it, but do not measure from the top of this two by four to the top of that one. Because if you are bowed, that's where you're going to go wrong. Measure from the bottom right here to the corner, bottom right here to the corner. And what's going to happen when you go to push this, when you go to push this in, it's going to be a little snug. Take this side over here and pry it out to that length. Just like that. It's already standing up. Then just tap it down where it needs to go. And that quick, you will make that perfectly square and level with your piece. Just like that. So where that wall wasn't standing up complete, completely straight, now that we've got this all the way down in here and tight, look how tight our seam is. So that's exactly how you accomplish that. And then you just keep in mind, you keep it level with your sheet here. Remember, it didn't matter if we overhung some, it all matters on that last piece. So once that one is in play, you get that clamp down. That's how you tie on your last piece. Uh, just wanted to throw you that uh, information there because that's how a lot of the, uh, that's how a lot of projects will sit here and be crooked at the end. Uh, just by putting that in there and measuring from the bottom distance is going to cause those sides to bow out or to come together once you tack it in from here. So we're going to finish this out real quick and then we're going to show you how to get this uh, maple in here and get it sitting in the box. All right, so there's our pretty little box, just as strong as ever. Uh, Gonna be a great box to house all this in. Remember, I lock in those corners throughout the whole thing. And then everything else was right up underneath. Just holding those, holding those walls. So now that we've got our box and he is stable as ever, now we're gonna be putting our maple down in here. Um, the great benefit of these walls is we're actually going to set it on the upper walls and we're going to show you how we're going to mark underneath here and get this perfectly straight. Now you can measure it out the same way. Uh, it's one way, one way's fine. The other way's fine. It doesn't matter. We're going to show you how to set it on here and actually take a pin up underneath and get our exact measurements. You could actually measure it the same way though, either way you want to do it. Okay, so here we go. We've got the first guy sitting on here. Um, and I just want to show you how we went about doing this. This guy is actually sitting square back here. Right on that line, exactly like he's supposed to be tight. And what we've done is we have taken a pin here right up underneath. Pull to the side as we're pulling out to make a mark right up underneath here and right up underneath there. That way, if your piece isn't 100% square or your box may not have been 100% square, however, it's going to fit down in here like a champ. Now, keep in mind, that box is square as they come. But your wood has a, uh, depending on how you cut it out and everything, uh, when the wood split, it could have had a slight little bend to it, a bow, just from cutting it in half, any of that. This is this is a real easy way to get this guy to fit down in here on the dime in case there's any unsquare part about this wood, which chances are there is. So we're going to get these two cut and drop down inside. 
We're gonna drop in the other side equally the same exact way, and then we're gonna show you what we're gonna do down inside of here that's gonna be a little bit different than what you're probably used to seeing. Okay, so we got both of these cut, uh, both ends that we've already checked them. They drop down in just like we were trying to. Uh, what I wanna show you, <coughs> what I wanna show you is uh, what we're getting ready to do now before we get all these down in here and show you the middle part of what we're getting ready to do. Um, we took, uh, so we've, we've got some five-way hammer, uh, you know, a couple wood chisels. We've got the sander down here. We're going to get these edges here cleaned up, and we're going to get all this loose stuff off, and we're going to kind of polish up this edge that's going to be our river. So just wanted to, didn't want to skip that step. We're not really going to show you, uh, you know, obviously, anything loose like that. That's what we're aiming for. We're going to get all this cleaned up, and then we'll show you after we get it cleaned. Okay, so next step. So what we've done, um, we've got all the maple sanded off. Give you a good look here. So we've got everything really nice and all the all the character and it came out. So we are ready now to get this guy in here. But before we do, we're gonna do things a little different underneath of here because this is gonna be a bath vanity. Um, we're actually, this is uh, just a piece of Luan, is all this is. And what I did was cut this to fit exactly my length, but I shortened it on both sides because once you drop it in there that tight with the box built, you would never be able to get this back out. So what I'm gonna do is show you here, I'm gonna slide this down in here, and I'm just trying, as you can see, I'm just trying to stay even on both sides, about an even gap there, but my distance, of course, is gonna fit very tight like a glove. So let me give you a downward. There's our distance there, about a finger and about a finger over here. And we are completely tight across here. And all the way down here is the same. About a finger distance, about a finger distance here. And then we are tight and flush up through here. So the reason we put this down in here is now what we're gonna do is set this maple down inside of here and we are going to take this Luan and we are gonna trace this river out as it is. We're gonna pull everything back out. We are gonna put both slabs back in at that point and then this middle piece of Luan where we cut it to the shape of the river will fit right back in, in here to that shape. The reason we are doing that, that is gonna be our backdrop of the bottom of this river. Uh, we are going to be painting that guy to bring all the color and life uh, in this river completely out. So we're going to trick out the bottom so that it shines out through later. And we're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so we have got everything situated and in place. Uh, nothing's locked in yet. Our Luan is down here in the center. And what I want to point out to you right here is a good little spot. You can see that mark, that line. That's what we did. We literally traced the curve of that all the way down. You can see right there where I skipped out and had to fix it. Uh, so we just ran a pencil down through here uh, on that Luan. And we did the same on the other side. So now we're going to pull these back out of the box. And that sheet of Luan that we had put down in there, we're going to cut that out to that shape. And then we're going to be applying a couple different things to that to give this more of an effect at the end. So now that we've pulled them out of the box, uh, this is what we've got left. So this is the shape we had drawn out. I just wanted to show you. We're going to cut this off and cut the other side and get, get those out of the equation. And then we're going to set our maple back down in here first. And then that guy should fit in just like a glove. Okay, so we've got our skin here cut out and uh, what I'm going to show you now is how we're going to get this set in here we've got this pulled tight back so I'm going to take this guy slide him down in here straight and we're just going to push this evenly right to that natural curve that we had 
what we're doing here is checking to make sure we're lined up and we're good. We are. We're exactly where we're supposed to be. So now, keep your eye on this. And I'm going to set this other one down. got this guy resting up here on the side that's the cutout uh, so the paint color we've got our choice as the backdrop literally uh, this is North Carolina blue so any Tar Heel fans you, you know what I'm talking about North Carolina blue is the name of the color we are just going to roll this guy on here remember this is enamel a lot better than acrylic. We are going to coat this entire guy here with this North Carolina blue. And this is going to be our base color, if you will, our backdrop color uh, to shine through our resin. Okay, so there you have it. Relax, it's not done. I know it looks cool. <laughs> uh, we've got everything in place, as you can see. We painted this two coats. And just for everybody out there who chooses acrylic, let me give you a good tip. The reason we choose enamel, something about acrylic, uh, it, it to me, just a personal opinion, it looks like a, um, it looks like a really good color in the tube. Uh, when you put it out there, though, it's almost like everything has a dull finish to it. The color kind of lessens when it gets hit next to a wood or anything like that. But anyway, just my opinion, enamel works so much better um, for what we're trying to achieve. We already have that deep, rich color we're looking for that's going to be really cool. Um, we're not going to tape any of this. Obviously, we want the resin to lock it. Uh mend everything together and fill it up. It, this is about two and a half inches thick. So that was exactly what we were trying to achieve there. Uh, when we pour the center, uh, we're gonna let that fill up crystal clear and this is gonna magnify like a hundred times at you and look way down deep inside. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're obviously gonna put rocks and other things in here. So just wanted to show you where we're at. Everything is set in place. We are getting ready to screw up underneath and draw all these seams down completely snug, completely tight. We're going to do that to both sides, and then we're going to come back, get this guy um, sealed up, and then we're going to be starting the, of course, pour. All right, so I've already uh, siliconed up one side. Obviously, we're not taping anything. We want this to lock in. Uh, so, when it comes down to applying a seal coat to the inner edges or not, uh, here's what I can tell you. A lot of people do, a lot of people do not. I don't think it's wrong or right either way. I will tell you this though, when you do put a seal coat here on this raw edge part, it will help lessen the bubbles and it also will help strengthen the bond uh, between the resin and the wood. Now, keep this in mind. Uh, if you're doing a countertop, something to that nature that's gonna be sitting on several rows of level cabinets and things of that nature, uh, 
that's where I kind of feel the gray area, if you will. Um, in, in our case, we are not going to seal these inner edges just because this guy is going to be sitting on cabinets. Um, you know, more of your uh, farmhouse type tables that are going to have long stretches uh, with nothing. I do recommend any type of distance like that in your legs, anything. It's probably best to seal coat the inner edges. So hopefully that answer helps a lot of people that's wondered why some people do it and why some people don't. Um, but simple as ever, the DAP Ultra Clear, it's about $9 a tube for this guy here in Kentucky. I know that's a little expensive, but you know, the non-yellowing, the completely waterproof, you know, everything else, this is why we buy the better product. So just like everything else, we're going to start right here in the corner. Just grab that guy and make sure he's, uh, make sure he's sealed in. Same thing with over here. Remember to cut your tip flat. And I always go up on top here just a little bit, just in case of any overflow problem. But I always cut the tip of this guy flat. That way he hits in here and, and just gets a small amount uh, in where I need it instead of getting a big glob that I'm running through here. Kind of down and at an angle. That way you're going to get everything really well. Just like that. I am right back into that guy. Just like that. Took real well there. Now I'm just going to close up these two little edges here at the end. And then it's time for everybody's favorite part. It's time to get this guy poured now. Uh, I do recommend letting this silicone sit on here for at least 24 hours. So we will not be pouring today, but uh, we will be pouring first thing out the gate in the morning. Keep in mind, none of these got planed or anything yet because at the end of this, we take this out of the mold. Uh, we're going to be using uh, uh, we're going to be using a router sled. We're going to set all this guy up. We're going to plane this guy across all the way down. Uh, much easier that way. We're gonna shrink down probably a total of a half an inch. We're gonna make this guy complete two, two and a quarter inch finished out. Uh, we will be flood coating this guy. And uh, just so you know what we're gonna end up doing, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this guy in the back room. We're gonna get him set up and we're gonna get ready to flood coat him. So we'll be right back. All right, so let me catch you up to speed here. We went ahead and added all our little goodies inside. So that's really going to turn out really cool. So I just wanted you to see, all we did was just place these, uh, several different ones over here we're working with, and we just we just placed them out accordingly. There's there's no wrong way or right way. Uh, it's just whatever you're trying to look for. Uh, keep in mind, though, we have a vessel sink that's going to go right dead center here. So we will be measuring and figuring out our sink base that's going to sit on top of here at the end. We'll measure and get him uh, ready to have that drain go right up through that. So we'll have to cut out at the end of the rainbow here, but we will position all the rocks away from that center point so we don't drill down into nothing later. 
So keep that in mind. You don't want to forget about hooking up that sink later. That's why we went with an on top sink. So we just had the plumbing at an inch and a half going through instead of the whole sink trying to drop in this.